basically, you know, we're just gonna do a cursory investigation. All right. The Dillmans are headed back to Cave 5, an intriguing location where an earlier dye test suggested the possibility of interlock tunnels. Dan, I got Keller in Cave 5. Based on research done by Dan's grandfather, he believes the tunnel system could lead to a cave holding Aztec treasure. They're sending in divers to learn more. So we call this Weeping Cave. You can clearly hear that the sandstone is weeping, right? The water is, is dripping out of it. All right, guys, grab your stuff, and can you be ready in 15 minutes? Yeah, 15 should be good. All right, beautiful. We're checking out Weeping Cave right now because we've got some tracing dye appearing in it, and it's not too far away from Shadow Cave. So we've got a connection there. We continue to look for tunnels. If we find a tunnel system, then we've found evidence that someone made those tunnels and we need to figure out if it was the Aztecs. Can you guys hear me up there? Yes, sir. Can you hear me okay? Looks like they've almost made it across the, uh, the back of the cavern. What's the conditions like down there right now? Is it, uh, you know, pretty muddy, a lot of silt, or is it pretty clear as you got further out? It's a fairly silty bomb. Yeah, can you guys stay next to the wall? Yep, got it. I'm coming up on something on the right here. There are a few layers of white rock here and there. White rocks? If there's white rocks down there, it's not from that cave. Okay, well, you know what? Uh, let's mark that as a place of interest, and let's get closer to the back of the cave where the green tracing dye was coming out. Someone, at some point in time, put those rocks there. It's definitely enough intrigue for me to say, let's, let's look a little deeper. You guys are headed to the exact location, that 10 o'clock, where the uh, tracing die came up. You're in a good area. Follow the cliff down all the way to the bottom if you can. Copy that. I'm going to need to get a bit more rocky and crumbly over here. Are you guys feeling any kind of uh, change in, in water temperature or pressure uh, while you're down there? When we see the temperature drop, it could be an indicator that that would be a spring opening. So that's what we're looking for, a natural opening, a natural pathway that opens up into this larger tunnel system. I don't feel any change in water temperature yet, but I did just find a small hole that goes up under a layer of rock. H how big would you say it is? I can get about elbow deep in it. Yeah, it's gonna pin that white layer of rock. Holy shit. This hole or possible tunnel that the diver is reporting to us that he has found could be where the die came out of. It could also be a tunnel entrance. This is, is actually something that we have to investigate further. Are they coming up? TJ, come on up. TJ. I'm seeing something up ahead. I'm gonna go check it out. Oh, right on. Just checking on you guys, making sure you're good. Couple of things he found. The hell could he have found? How was it? Found a couple of things that look kind of out of the ordinary back there. What the? I don't see anything else like it down there. Mm -hmm. Hollow. Kinda. Yeah, yeah, they're hollowed out. When you can see straight through it. I don't know if this is bone oh, or shell. It looks like it could be bone. Yeah, I thought it looked like bone when it's down there. TJ has brought us up what looked to be bone or shell. 
But when you look at these pieces, they've clearly been worked. And you just found this on the on the bottom? It's kind of up by the wall. Really? Towards the back. Were they grouped together or kind of scattered around? They were pretty close together. Hmm. We need to share this with an expert and get their opinion on exactly what they believe this is. Professor, thank you so much for uh, coming by today. The Dillmans are meeting with Professor Curly Glapoyawa, founder of the Chamali Institute of Mesoamerican Arts, to get some information on what they discovered in Weeping Cave. So we found these here in the canyon, and I'd love to get your opinion oh, wow. on them. So what you have here are pieces of a spondylus shell. And spondylus is characterized by these bright, beautiful reds and pinks. It's also known as a, uh, a spiny oyster, some people call it, because it looks like a, a clam shell, but it has all of these spikes coming off of it. And it looks like that's what these are. A relative of sea scallops, Spondylus are found in warmer coastal climates, embedded in coral and rock. So when you look at something like this, this is what we call an exotic. It doesn't come from here, it comes from somewhere else. Being that it's so hard to get a hold of, it's going to be held with much higher value. Right. So where are they normally found like in the world? Are they pretty common or are they centralized in certain areas? So spondylus shell, generally you're going to find a lot in what's now called the Gulf of California. You're talking about uh, California all the way down through Mexico. You're gonna find spondylus shell all the way down there. The story of how this got here, you know, it's hard to pinpoint it 100%, sure. but we could certainly say that this came from that region, um, most likely along the, the, the Pacific coast of, of what's now called Mexico. The Aztec Empire ran for miles along the Pacific coastline, giving the Aztecs ample access to spondylus. These shellfish are found only in salt water, not at all natural to the freshwater in this Utah cave. So what you have here is absolutely rare for this area. It seems to have been, you know, drilled or worked. Yeah, the way that these holes are bored out through the center, how would they have done something like that? So something like that, they would have used a spine from some sort of cactus and a little bit of sand to create the friction. It would have been a specialist mm -hmm. who created this. Oh, wow. So this is a spondylus shell necklace. Wow. Now that's pretty big. That's pretty amazing. Was it a specific level of society that wore it? Yeah, so something like this could definitely have been like the personal adornment of a priest. So especially having the associations of water with the shells, you'll see that a lot of the, uh, what they call gods or the teteo is what they're known as that are related to water are often adorned with spondylus shells. Really? So this is really cool. So I think that finding a spondylus shell necklace here in Southern Utah is pretty significant. Wow, I, think, awesome. uh, I think you've got something that's uh, pretty spectacular. The time and effort that it must have taken to create those boreholes inside of those shells, it, it just blows my mind how hard and how long and how much effort they would take to make such an object. And I'm honored to hold these shells in my hand. I really feel a connection to my ancestors. And we're hoping that this is not the last thing we find uh, and that this is just the beginning of the amazing things that we're gonna find in this canyon. Mm -hmm.